decision to lift the ban on federal funding for stem cell research. U.S. Congressman Chris Smith is a New Jersey Republican, and U.S. Congresswoman Diana DeGette is a Colorado Democrat. She's the author of the book Sex, Science, and Stem Cells Inside the Right Wing Assault on Reason. Well, that's tough stuff. Congressman Smith, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Here's the question. <clears throat> when people try to have a baby and can't, and resort to fertility clinics. A lot of couples do that today. They want children and they don't get them, so they need the help of a fertility clinic. And they engage in that effort with the petri dish and the, sp and the sperm and the egg, and they produce fertilized eggs. They produce extra fertilized eggs that are not used in creating babies. What do we do with those extra? Well, what do we Chris, do with those? Yes, they should be adopted. A couple of hours ago, I was at a Capitol Hill press conference with some of the children who are called snowflake babies, right. babies who have been adopted while they were still in a cryogenically frozen right. state. Uh, you don't have to throw them away. You don't have to submit them to experimentation that kills them and then mm -hmm. steals their stem cells. You can adopt them. And I think that is the humane. Okay, whose uh, call future. should that be? Well, hopefully, if, if, if the people, parents, if the if parents, the parents don't, want don't want any that longer, done. if they don't want that done, you know, human life is not property. And I think we have to be very clear that the value and the inherent value of every human being uh, has to be such that, that nobody owns anybody. Right. Well, who Even would have though, the right? Back to my question. Well, right if now, there's the way it's a fertilized said, egg in a, in a fertility clinic, who do you say should make well, the decision? Well, right now, it, it is the biological parents who convey. Oh, well, you want to change we, that? No. We want, we want this option to be emphasized so that those people out there who have uh, their Right. They're in human embryos being frozen in these cryogenic tanks to say there is an alternative to destroying either way, pouring down the drain Suppose or they choose research. Well, my hope would be that we would look at that individual not should as they be a allowed commodity. To do that? No, I think they should be they should be adopted. But they should, should they be allowed be to make the option? Well they're doing it. You know, the only issue today with Barack Obama is that he has said federally funded embryonic stem cell right. research will take place. It's going on already. It has not proved to be efficacious okay, whatsoever. That's an argument. That's a, well, it's a big argument, argument okay. because it hasn't worked. L L what do you do when you have, uh, and I want to get to this point because a lot of people sure. wonder about it. If you go along with, with fertility clinics, and you do, I'd prefer it, you happens, allow it happens every day. You allow yes. it, yeah, it immorally. Day, yeah. What do you do when people choose either to turn off the freezer and let the, 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 the fertilized egg die, which I think, according to the Catholic religion, you never have to go to extreme purposes. Or, no, you well, don't have well, to go no, to extreme Chris, circumstances Chris, to keep a person alive. That if you, you made, accept that those fertilized eggs are people, then there's nothing wrong with life. turning there's off no the freezer. About it and it's, well, what's wrong with turning off the freezer? Well, that would destroy them. Well, what's wrong with using them for research rather than doing that? That would destroy them as well. The hope would be that you would look to adopt them. And that's, there's an alternative that okay. is humane and compassionate. But you want to foreclose the option of using it for research. Well, if you use it for research, you have to kill those embryos in order to derive well, You want to foreclose cells. that option. But there's also a move. This is just the beginning of, of a slippery okay. slope. It begins with saying, use the so-called spare embryos. There's no such well, thing as Well, many would say the life. slippery but, slope, but then, to use that Chris, terminology, but Chris, but Chris, is that fertility clinics. But then what you do is that you will create human life in order to kill it and derive their stem cells. Right. That's where all of this will go under the Obama order, right, and that's yeah. unfortunate. When adult stem cells, especially right. induced pluripotent stem cells, IPS stem cells, Dr. James Thompson, he's the one who brought us right. embryonic stem cell research. He's changed. He may yeah. still support right. it in the abstract, but he's doing IPS research, induced pluripotent stem cells, where you can take my skin cells and yours right. and coax that into becoming embryo-like. Okay, let's, so bring, let's, no bring, let's bring in uh, life whatsoever. Congresswoman DeGette, what do you make of this argument well, that we don't need to go to these, uh, to these embryonic stem cells, which the president has allowed federal funding for today? Well, well Chris Smith is, is completely incorrect. First of all, uh, what we do with our bill and what the president did today is he said couples who have gone undergone in vitro fertilization who have embryos that are left over can either donate them to other couples, as Congressman Smith is saying, or they can donate them for ethical scientific research. Some people say it's the ultimate pro-life decision because it lets people donate something that would be thrown away as medical waste to give life. There are about th between three and four hundred of these so-called snowflake babies that have been created through the donation of embryos. There are four or five hundred thousand embryos that have been discarded. And so we just say, let them use, be, be used ethically for medical research. Now there have What's been- What's the normal, what, is the, what do the fertility clinics normally do? Say a couple sets their minds to have three children and three children 
are created in vitro and they have shown their children, their sperm, their egg, and they have that with the help of science. Yes. Once they've had the three children, they normally say to the fertility clinic, what do they normally say, Congresswoman, to the, to the fertility clinic to do with the extra fertilized eggs? What do they ask them to do? Usually what happens is the eggs are frozen for some period of time and they're used for subsequent children. But then when the couple doesn't want any more children, the embryos that are left over are almost always thrown away by the fertility clinics as medical waste. And so what we're saying, and frankly, a number of Democrats and Republicans, pro-choice and pro-life, say let people donate those voluntarily for embryonic okay. stem cell but, research. And, and let me just and, say and, one more thing. Um, these, these, this, this adult stem cell skin cell research is extremely exciting. But all of the researchers, including Dr. Thompson, say you need both. Congress should not be making these decisions of what type of ethical cell-based research. The researchers should do that, and we should support that through federal funding. Chris, I think most uh, Americans would be shocked to know that if this ever did work, that is to say embryonic stem cell research, and you only do research to try to prove and, and to make it work, it would require millions and millions of embryos to be destroyed, far in excess of any no. embryos. Why? Maybe because no. just because of the quantity and the quality that's, that the would be required. And, that, and that. that's what the other side has said in their own literature. No. It wouldn't just so be a couple of So you're saying we would have to farm them then? There would have to be fetus farming no, or, or a human embryo not. farming without any well, this is a scientific that. question. This is not a moral question. This that's is a scientific a, question. That's and right. you argued, uh, Congresswoman DeGrad, that that's not necessary. Or read your own uh, literature. Not, not only is it not necessary, but it would be prohibited under both the president's executive order and under the legislation that no, Congress passed. I read the Castle executive order. It's not done. prohibited, with all due respect. He says whatever is allowed by law, they're willing to do. But it opens the door towards what we consider to be a slippery slope. You no. start by saying we need to use so many very quickly. The researchers will claim it's not enough. No. Yeah. And then there's well, going to be a demand. Just to, get, just to bring back uh, some sure. of the politics here, Nancy Reagan, my friend, had this statement out today. Of course, she lost the former president, her husband, to uh, Alzheimer's disease. Quote, this came out today. I'm very grateful that President Obama has lifted the restrictions on federal funding for embryonic stem cell research. These new rules will now make it possible for scientists to move forward. I urge researchers to make use of the opportunities that are available to them and to do all they can to fulfill the promise that stem cell research offers. Countless people suffering from many different diseases stand to benefit from the answers stem cell research can provide. We owe it to ourselves and to our children to do everything in our power to find cures for these diseases. And soon, as I've said before, time is short and life is precious. Congressman Smith, yeah. do you know which diseases would benefit from embryonic stem cell research? No, because every... Do you want to know? Uh, oh, I know the list that is often in. But well, why do you why do you why do you discard that because, argument? Because this is a scientific well, no, question. Chris, you can make your me metaphysical arguments, and I accept them. Adult stem cells. But you, adult stem cells are already curing a large number or mitigating disease in a that, large number of cases. Why did Why do scientists wish to get access to embryonic there, there stem are cells always, if the there are adults always, are favorable? More because there are, there are always some scientists who are living in what worked or what they thought would work before. That's why I believe Barack Obama's okay. statement today is behind the times. He needs to catch up with where, where okay, we are uh, right Congresswoman now. Congresswoman DeGette responded to that. In 2007. That he said the, the president is out of date here. Very much out of date. We've had a number of advances in the last few years. <laughs> Excuse me. In We've had a number of advances which are, are great. But ultimately, we need both embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells. <laughs> well, let's get to the scientific question. Let's go back to the moral question. If the embryonic stem cells had an advantage, a scientific advantage, in terms of their ability to cure diseases, would you but go along with it? Would you go along no, with that? No, because it's hypothetical that's not true. Would you go along with No, doing human embryo experimentation might yield some results, but it's unethical to kill human embryos as well as human fetuses. Therefore, even children. if it works, you wouldn't be for it. No, I would be for the alternative, which does work. But it's a hypothetical that's no longer dated. It's outdated okay. because adult stem cells, especially induced pluripotent oh, stem here. cells, are working and they're working amazingly. But the scientific it's community, I'm some looking at that now. Here's some poll data. Well, I know, some people, let's look at some more poll data. 64% of the American people, according to the Rasmussen poll, which is about two thirds, support this. These are independent. Support what? Stem These cell are or embryonic? No. Embryonic when, stem cell research. When you ask the question about Particularly, for stem cells. The question put to them was embryonic stem cell research. And 64% of independent voters said yes. And what about actually, the rest of the country? 73% okay. of all voters support embryonic stem cell research. 
And, and, and well, when you I'll, ask the question, if you know that there's an alternative well, that works, isn't that an huge argument? Numbers of people this say, is where I wonder about cells. when we get into using moral arguments and then masking them with scientific no, arguments. No, moral arguments, Chris. I accept the moral when metaphysics it comes to of this. Experimentation, your, your metaphysical position is sound it, from your point of view. It's totally sound. The question is, do you then pull back and say, well, even if you don't like my metaphysical position that it's wrong to kill embryonic stem cells for scientific purposes, I'll give you an easier way out. I'll tell you they're not as good as adult stem cells. Well, that's, that's true. But it is true. And, and we were saying that. I don't believe that the scientific community accepts that. Oh, do they? Sure let me read some quotes. I got let, lots of quotes. Let, let, me, let me just say that that there are really exciting new developments with adult stem cells. But all of the researchers, I just spoke with Dr. Elias Zerhouni, who was President Bush's NIH director just two days ago, and he reaffirmed that you need all of this research, the ethical okay. embryonic stem cell research you stop the and the adults. For, uh, let me make one point. Right, right, right. right. You're well known on this. this can you stop the president from doing this by executive order? Uh, are you going to bring action in Congress? Well, we're going to bring action, but, well, but you won't be able to stop him. He probably will have his way, and many embryos will die as a direct result. Okay, thank you. I appreciate thank your you. I hope many diseases position. will be cured, though. I, look, this is a, a real moral argument, and I accept both sides of this argument. The American people are going to have to decide this. Congressman Christmas, thank you. Congresswoman. Diana DeGette, thank you for joining us and congratulations you. on your book and your research. Coming up, is Rush Limbaugh actually bad for the Republican Party? That's the argument concerned of former President Bush speechwriter David Frum makes in this week's cover story in Newsweek. David joins us. I want to ask him what kind of threats he's getting because this guy has staked out a position against the